Sometimes God transitions us to different places, and as He does, the same thing happens in the life of our uh, missionaries. Uh, the missionary that you'll be able to hear tonight is Justin Hayes. He was started off in Ireland. You'll hear a little bit about this, and now he's transitioned to, to Spain. You're going to he hear a little bit of how God used him uh, to reach uh, the Spanish people and what he's doing in their life. I hope you enjoy this interview. Welcome to our Wednesday evening service. Last week, uh, we heard from one of our missionaries, and uh, this week, we get to hear from another missionary. Uh, this missionary is Jason uh, Hayes. He's uh, in Spain, and so we're glad to be a part of uh, your life, your ministry, and uh, tell us a little bit about what's going on there in Spain, if you could. Well, uh, everything is going great here, and by the way, hello to all of you. I uh, <laughs> want to make sure I get that out of the way. Um, Things are going great here, especially in the south of Spain, obviously with COVID-19 um, sure. everywhere suffering. And we actually just came out of a fairly um, stringent lockdown. Uh, yeah. Schools were still going on and the, nece the necessary things in life were still open as far as supermarkets and hospitals, yeah. obviously, doctors sure. and stuff like that. But um, other than that, uh, you had to go into and from work. You could not go to any restaurants. Wow. Um, just everything was kind of pretty much locked down. So we just yeah. came out of that. So everyone's kind of in a good mood right now. Yeah. Uh, everyone's <laughs> able to go out and get their breakfast every morning. Uh, Cause that's pretty, pretty traditional here in Spain. Uh, go and have your coffee and your tostada at a local place that costs yeah. like a buck 50. Oh, and, wow. Uh, and just have a great breakfast. But uh, yeah. so people are in good spirits right now. Uh, weather's getting warmer. So, yeah. Um, so things are good. Things so are good. So obviously, it's nice to see things going well, but obviously with uh, the pandemic, things like that, especially this past year, there's probably some challenges that you face. But what's one uh, through those? What is one of the most exciting things that you've seen God do through your life, your ministry uh, as a result of that uh, this this past year? Well, definitely, uh, I think more than anything else, the faithfulness of, of our people. Uh, we're yeah. still a very young church. We're still a very small church. Um and it's been amazing to see how through this, even going through very strict lockdowns for three months where nobody was anywhere but their home, sure. uh, aside from going to the grocery store and things were very uh, difficult during that time as they were in the United States as well, I'm sure. Right. Um, yeah. Seeing how even through that time, people were still involved in the meetings, uh, still involved in church, even though it was uh, via live stream, uh, different things like that, pre-recorded, and then the Wednesday nights, um, our Bible studies through Zoom and, and different meetings that we would set up throughout the week to try to keep in touch. But coming out of those three months, seeing how people were not just faithful during that time, but they were growing and they were continuing yeah. to grow even coming out of that. Sure. And um, not only that, but just seeing how um, they allowed God to use them uh, during this time and witnessing to their family, their friends, their coworkers as much as they could because it was a, it was a great opportunity because everybody was home. And so yeah, they could sure. contact pretty easily and people were very mindful of um, their condition and what was going on in the world and very, very much thinking about uh, what happens next. Yeah. And so as a result of that, we were actually able to see some of our people lead uh, family members that live um, in a whole different continent to the yeah. world. That's incredible. Uh, so now, did you see people more apprehensive through this pandemic um, that were uh, more accept, more of an awareness, more of an openness uh, to the gospel as a result of that? The Spanish people are very friendly. They're very open and um, in general. I mean, they're very close to the gospel. Sure. But they're pretty open to conversation in general, especially down here in the South. Um, but there has definitely been a shift in the culture to be much more apprehensive, to be much more reserved, to be much more right. kind of standoffish towards That's others right. that they don't uh, know personally. And so I, I think that um, there's been kind of two things. People have, have become a little bit more reserved and a little bit more guarded, but also right. people are a little bit more open to talk to you about things that have Spiritual to do matters. with eternity yeah. because they are very aware. Yeah. of the fact that, hey, they had a family member exactly. or a friend or a coworker that was impacted by yeah, COVID. It hits so. you personally. And as a result of that, you're, you want to be able to be prepared. Okay, what if what if that hits me? And um, yeah, 
great points. Let me ask you this. What is uh, some of the most creative ways, um, being in Spain, you, you, you mentioned a few things as far as, as exciting seeing family members come to Christ um, of, of members there. But what's one of the most creative ways that you've been able to show uh, the love of Christ or show Jesus to others there in Spain? Well, we actually, um, we had started doing Facebook Live for our, our Sunday morning services um, okay. not long before we started with the COVID. I believe it was maybe just maybe two months beforehand, we started broadcasting our, our services. And so through that, we started into the Facebook Live um, in the COVID, and then we started pre-recording and, uh, and then putting stuff like that out. I see. But one of the things that I thought was very interesting during this COVID time, we thought that we were going to be able to, to celebrate our uh, fifth anniversary of the church more in a normal fashion, yeah. which we normally have that be a very big evang uh, evangelistic push in our year. Uh, to where we'll have double the amount of church members there, and the majority of those would be unsafe people. Okay. And um, uh, we're hoping to be able to do the same thing. Um, however, right before our anniversary, um, the government closed us down. Basically, again, really limited how many people could be in the service. I think we we're only able to, able to have about 17 people uh, in the service at one time in the building, and that's where we're at now, actually. Yeah. Um, and so through that, uh, we actually ended up having to do our anniversary service online. Okay. And so um, our, our people really got behind inviting their friends That's and neat. coworkers yeah. to that online service, even though it was a little out of the box and yeah, whatnot. Different, um, yeah. People that had never been in our church probably never would have stepped into our church before because they'd been invited before and hadn't come. Yeah. Uh, actually tuned in, got online. And, and check this out. And then afterwards, we always have a gift for people okay. uh, during our, our anniversary. And so this year, we're actually doing a bake gift. We had a local bakery uh, do wow. a, um, a cookie for us, a butter yeah. cookie for us with our logo and, and oh, uh, the year oh, that cool. we were established and everything. Yeah. And we actually went to all the homes of all the church members and people that were in our local area that no were way. online and what delivered, cool and delivered cookies. Yeah. So it, it was just, a, just a, a thing that we could do to show people that we were caring and that people were out there um, and that they're thankful that they, they were on the service and that if we could have any other contact to let us know. And yeah. people really received it well. Now, you, you kind of said, uh, said that very rapidly as far as, you know, getting gifts, uh, uh, these, these cookies and handing them out. But I'm sure you got some great responses from people. What was a couple of the responses that you got from uh, folks that you had delivered those to? Well, church members, um, they had no idea what the gift was going to be because we always try to yeah. keep it as much of a secret as we can. Um, and the church members were just shocked to see us show up at their door yeah. uh, after they'd seen us live, you know. Yeah. And then other people that were not church members um, at first, uh, maybe uh, they might be reluctant to open the door, sure. but then they recognize us and they know who we are, that we're from the church that they just saw. And just want to let you know that we're praying for you. And if we can do anything, we always typically uh, couple that with either a gospel track, some sort of literature that we can follow up on. And um, if we know that the person does not have a Bible or uh, if we know the person personally and that they're unsaved, yeah. we'll accompany that with a uh, with an actual um bible or with uh, even the dumb book uh, in okay. spanish yeah um if we if we know them personally and we know that they're not saved so sure what a cool what a neat thing what a neat story to be able to share um so as we talk about kind of great things or creative things, how God has used you on the mission field, we want to see, um, on the, if you've been on the mission field, uh, remind me, you and uh, your wife, Grace, how long have you guys been on uh, the mission field now? In Spain or in general? In general. So yeah, God has transitioned a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, we, totally. We were in Ireland first. And so we have been in missions work for 15 years. Wow. Okay. So quite an incredible time uh, that you guys have been on the field. What is probably one of the greatest things? I don't know if this you want to speak into as maybe the transferring of how God led you from Ireland, even uh, to Spain, or maybe what is one of the greatest things you would say, you know, God did this and it was completely God. I had no idea how it happened, uh, but this was a, this was definitely a God thing. We'd love to hear that uh, specifically from, uh, from, from your life and ministry. I think probably there's a, there's a lot of those that we could sure. step through in, in that uh, recall. But I think 
was the biggest and, and most identifiable um, was the transition from Ireland to Spain. Um, when Grace knew me in Bible college, she knew me as Justin, the guy that was going to Ireland. Yeah. And so even before she met me, she knew that if we were going to start dating and then get married and whatnot, the eventual end is living in Ireland as a missionary. Yeah. And so there was no, there was no surprise to that. And I had never seen kind of this uh, turning that God would take our lives through to, to change us from Ireland to Spain. I mean, yeah. I guess it shouldn't have been a surprise as you can see the life of Paul happened over and over and over yeah. again. Um, but I think so much we, we look at missions in the modern era as you go to one country, you live, you die there, and, and that's it. Right. And it's really not necessarily always that way. And, and I think I had that mentality that uh, I'd go to Ireland and mm -hmm. uh, we would go to Ireland. We'd start a church and however many churches and, and then God would allow us to, to, to live our lives and serve there in Ireland. Yeah, and Spain wasn't even wasn't a blip on our radar. It wasn't even okay. like a a discussion of going to visit, and I had no desire. Um, you know, I grew up in part of my life, anyways, in California, and it wasn't anything of, against Spanish speakers. But I, I was like, you know, I've been around other Spanish speakers, and I knew that Spain wasn't Mexico or anywhere else, but um, yeah. it was going to be different. Uh, but I had just no desire to, to even come down here to visit. And so God had to take me through a process that took about a year and a half to fully come to grips with, yeah, okay, not only is God moving us from Ireland, um, but he is moving us to a country that I hadn't even considered before. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of different steps. I'm, I'm kind of making it short for you. Um, personal things, uh, conversations with our pastor, conversations with the mission board, uh, talking just with people that we know um, that have been to Spain. For sure. Just really praying. And uh, just, it was so evident that every time I would get focused on something else or somewhere else that God would do something to bring my attention back to Spain, whether it be through a conversation with a checkout clerk at a, at a grocery store friends that we've known for seven years that all of a sudden are telling us how every year they take a trip to Spain um, and showing us photos. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it was, I just kept bringing you back, bringing you back, bringing you back to Spain. It was Spain. insane. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, we lived in a tiny little village, uh, not even 10,000 people outside of Dublin. And the church was in another town um, yeah. that was bigger, but all of a sudden uh, one summer, our, our little village was just, inundated with probably like 40 or 50 uh teenagers and all of them running around with little blue backpacks to say speak to me in english i'm from spain um oh, wow. it was just why would you come to our village and why would you live here for for three yeah. four weeks learning learning english um yeah it's just those those little things that although are circumstantial but god uses the circumstances of life oftentimes to bring to get our attention for sure and so um yeah, I, I definitely would say that was probably one of the most notable and most impactful because okay. then we started the whole process to make the transition. Yeah, for sure. I love to be able to hear stories. In, in fact, our people tonight are listening. Um, I love to kind of peer into the life of our missionaries because sometimes we think, oh, yeah, they're doing that over there. And we have no idea um, the struggles that you face personally. We have no idea how specifically the Lord is leading in your life. But we desire that. And one of the things that we love is getting to see, uh, you know, reports and even at the end of the year, uh, how God has worked through your life. But kind of getting those, um, you know, moments like these where we see, OK, God did this. God did this because that helps us to be able that encourages us. And we love that. Um, one of the other things that we wanted to ask of you is if you would be able to kind of share a little bit of how God is working uh, in your life, uh, maybe through the idea of a devotional that you could you could give to us. And uh, and help us tonight through our through our service. Definitely, um, I'm actually going to be sharing a thought with you uh, tonight that is coming from uh, uh, it's a sermon series that I've been doing with our church called Facing God or uh, Coming Face to Face with God. Basically, a um, it's a look into how God's character, God's attributes, um, 
how they impact our lives and how when we come in contact with with that, um, how it really and truly does impact us. And I actually just finished up the series on Sunday and I was talking about God's greatness. And um, we talked a lot about different things throughout the series, but really kind of culminating on his greatness was was one of the things that God laid on my heart at a very early stage in preparing for it. And he led me to the passage of Isaiah 40. And I think that all of us know um, Isaiah 40, verse 31, or maybe 30 and 31, where it says, even the youth shall faint and the weary and the young shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. And I think most of us understand that we, we've, we've learned that verse probably at a very early age. Uh, it's been a verse that's been very comforting to us uh, at many times in our lives. But I think we look at that verse and we take it out of context of the chapter that it's in. Because really, Isaiah 40, if you go back and you study Isaiah 40, we're talking about a time when Isaiah is having to come before the children of Israel. And God is telling him to, to speak to them in a way. Because at this moment, they are coming out of captivity. They're still a remnant. Uh, they're coming out of captivity. They're going to take a long journey back to Jerusalem. They're going to be building the walls, building the temple. Everything's kind of treacherous and arduous and difficult. And what you see God remind them of through Isaiah, through how he is to have this kind of public discourse with them, um, is that God is greater than your circumstances. Even though I said earlier that God oftentimes uses our circumstances to uh, call our attention to him, but in that God is greater than the circumstances in our life. And I felt that it was very uh, applicable to the situation that we're in today in our world. Um, we look around us and we see just tremendous circumstances, a tremendous situation that our world is in today with COVID and um, I'm not even sure exactly how many people have died up to this point. I know here, uh, I know, I think the U.S. is is getting towards uh, about half a million uh, people if they haven't crossed that barrier yet. Um, Spain has been very impacted, Europe in general. But um, it's really a situation, a circumstance that is out of our control. It's incredible to think about, and it and can be very daunting and can set us back. And oftentimes what happens to us is we look at our circumstances or we look at God through our circumstances, right? And when we do that, we see God kind of very small, very distant, um, not really preoccupied with what's going on in our life. But somebody once said, don't look at God through your circumstances, look at your circumstances through the lens of God. And when you do that, you see that God is much greater than your circumstances, that he is still in control. He is all powerful. He is uh, concerned about your condition, your circumstances, what's happening. But you also see that the circumstances aren't greater than him. And that's what we see in, in Isaiah. If you look beyond uh, or earlier in, 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 the, in the passage before 30 and 31, uh, you can see in in verse 9, he says, O Zion, the, um, that bring us good tidings, get thee up into the high mountain, O Jerusalem, and bring us good tidings. Lift up thy voice with strength. Lift up, uh, be not afraid. Uh, say unto the cities of Judah, behold your God. Uh, these are people that are about to embark into something incredible, and they've had a terrible past of idolatry and all these different things that has brought them into captivity. But Isaiah is helping them to see that, hey, the circumstances of your past, God's greater than that. In fact, it's already been forgiven. They had the promise that if they were in a foreign land, that they were in captivity, um, that when they turn back to God, guess what? God's going to come and bring them out of captivity. It's what you can see throughout the life, uh, throughout the history of the children of Israel. Then you go into, you go into, I believe it's verse 26. Uh, after Isaiah talks about like, um, who God is and all that he did and creation and building up things. And uh, now you're going to give him a, 
an image as to an idol as an earthly thing and all these different things and he says in verse 26 lift up your eyes on high and behold who hath created these things that bringeth out their host by number he calleth them all by names by the greatness of his might for that he is strong in power not one failure that he tells us hey it's it's a difficult past that you have but that's that's done i'm greater than that it's been forgiven the present that you have now is huge and it's it's impossible but i'm asking you to do the impossible because i am the god of the impossible i'm the one who created all these things and then when you get down to what we read earlier you're seeing him show them that hey you don't have to be afraid you don't have to have these fears and verse uh, 27 says why sayest thou o jacob and speakest o israel my way is hid from the lord and my judgment is passed over from god almost as if god doesn't know what's going on in our life god isn't preoccupied with us god's not concerned and they're fearful that god's not concerned with them and he tells them coming through verse 28 and 29 and then he gets to verse 30 and 31 hey god's bigger than your fears God's greater than any fear, any uh, thought that you might have that would be negative towards what he's called you to do, or negative towards yourself or the circumstance. God's greater than that. So then you see in context, verse 31, that if God is greater than my past, if God is greater than my present, if God is greater than my thoughts and my uh, uh, fears and my emotions, then the only thing I have to do is rest in him because it says but they that wait upon the lord they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength i don't have to be worried about what's coming down the line i don't have to be worried about the 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 road ahead i don't have to be worried about the wall that has to be built the temple that has to be restored i don't have to worry about all these things i don't have to be worried about all the circumstances of my life and the fears that i might have in regards to those things because he's greater than all of it and i'm resting in him and if i'm resting in him then i'm not looking to do it on my strength in my strength i'm going to do it according to his strength according to his will according to what he wants and there's always comfort and blessing in that and so when you look at god through your circumstances you see god very far off you see God very kind of small and distant and not really concerned. But when you look at your circumstances through who God is, God becomes very big. God becomes very great. He becomes very powerful. And you can see that even in this difficult circumstance and situation that you might be in, that there is nothing that can overcome him. And so when I wait on him and rest in him, there can I find peace and strength to move forward. And I think that's, when we look at that verse, it ought to encourage us. It ought to really challenge us to continue on for God, but not because, hey, it's what we should do. No, it's because of who he is. Sure. It's because of who he is. And yes, I have to do my part and actually take my hands, you know, to use yeah. that, that phrase, take my hands off the wheel and yeah. allow him to kind of, guide everything um but really i can continue forward because of him yeah man that's so powerful and i think Look, that go ahead no no worries. i think that even in this situ situation in this circumstance when we're fearful of what's going to happen with covid and what's going to happen in the year 2021 uh, with a new president with a new uh new things happening and and we're all kind of not sure what's going to take place um those nervous thoughts those fearful thoughts uh not knowing what's coming ahead ought to be really kind of erased out yeah because of who god is yeah man you said a couple great things i just want to reflect on um many times we look at these situations and uh we think wow what happened what went on and uh i think it was in verse 26 or 27 it says who hath created these things? 
um, who after it was just like, wow, I had no idea, no perspective. But then uh, you said, um, or, uh, God gives us strength to go through those difficult times. And then we can just rest in him. That's probably just to be very transparent um, with folks that are watching and, and even you. That's probably one of the most difficult parts for me is because just resting in him, because there is no, there is no control on my part. And it's like, I can't, I can't dictate what's going to happen, but yet I'm so much glad, I'm, I'm so much more happier in the long run whenever I just give it to God and say, Lord, I pray I need strength through this. I need, I need, um, I need your help. Cause that's all that really what he desires. And, and whenever I do that, it's, it's so much better anyhow. And uh, it comes out better. So man, what a great, uh, great challenging thought from God's word, Isaiah chapter 40. Um, very familiar passage and you brought some new new truths to life that I hadn't uh, been aware of before so I'm very grateful for that I know our people are let me ask you this I know there's probably a couple things that we can pray for you uh, about and we'd love to be able to pray with you before uh, we head out but um, I wanted to see what things that we can pray specifically for your needs about well definitely um, pray for we're in the middle of a move so you see this beautiful kitchen that normally uh a computer's not normally in the kitchen, but um, we're in between houses right now. And so I don't have internet set up yet uh, because of whatever delays. Um, be praying for that move to, to finally end is what we're wanting. We're wanting it to come to a finish. Uh, we were five days without electricity, camping oh, wow. it, roughing it in an apartment. Now, granted, we had running water, so uh, but no hot <laughs> water. Um, so it was definitely enjoyable. Um, but we're, we're looking for that to end yeah. so that we can actually get in and enjoy the new place and also be able to use it um, as God would see fit for his glory. Um, but also be praying. Um, we've, we've definitely seen a lot of growth in our church, in the people, not as in numerical growth, but as in spiritual growth. Sure. Um, a lot during this season. And just recently, uh, it was just a, an amazing week two of our men were working, uh, remodeling somebody's apartment. Um, and so they were both in, in there and, and one of the men had been there before putting together closets and whatnot yeah. and, uh, had kind of laid the groundwork for, uh, another one of our church men to come in and do the painting of the apartment. Oh, wow. And while they were both working, um, the, the lady of the couple, she mm -hmm. trusted Christ as their savior. Oh, praise God. Wow. Um, and so we're, we're working with the husband. Uh, sure. He comes from a, a family that has some uh, Christian evangelical background, uh, okay. but there's a lot of bitterness there. He's not saved, uh, but we're praying for him. Um, okay. Jose Ramon is his name. Uh, Inma is hers. And then in the same exact week, um, one of our teenage young men, he's 13, um, for different reasons, I uh, needed to do a little counseling. Uh, and so I actually invited my wife to come with me and we actually did some counseling with him. Um, and I'd never gotten a clear response from him uh, about salvation. And mm -hmm. basically my thought was before we can ever truly help you with any sure. kind of spiritual counseling, we've got to start with the, the biggest spiritual question. And that is, you know, do you know Jesus as your savior? Yeah. And so uh, we spent about two and a half hours together with him in our apartment that had no electricity, <laughs> um, that had boxes everywhere. And at the end of that time, uh, a kid that came in with a very hard spirit, very, um, just the situation is very difficult. Uh, he accepted Christ as Savior. That's amazing. And, That's so exciting. Uh, left a totally different kid. Yeah. And was actually there on Sunday with his family. Um, and his dad's not saved. Um, wow. And just, we're really praying for him. His name is, yeah. uh, in English, it would be Ezekiel. Okay. Yeah. Um, but please be, be praying, be praying for, for Inma and her growth, Ezekiel, his growth, and uh, Jose Ramon and his salvation. Yeah. Uh, can, I, can we pray for those right, right now? Definitely. Okay. Let's pray together. God, I thank you so much for the Hayes family. I think how that they are impacting uh, many people, uh, hundreds of people, scores of people in Spain. God, I pray that I uh, thank you for these two testimonies of, of getting to lead people to the Lord. Lord, that's what 
life is all about. God, I pray for their house. They would be able to transition. I pray that their electric would come on and I pray that they would be able to make that transition easily. Lord, I, I pray for Ema. Lord, I, I thank you so much uh, for, um, uh, for, I just pray that you continue to work in her life. I pray for uh, Jose Ramon. I pray God that he would uh, be saved and trust you as Lord and Savior. I thank you for Ezekiel that he's trusted you. And God, I pray that you would continue to do a great work. I pray that you'd bless this family. I pray God that you'd watch over them and use them in a powerful way. Continue to do that, God. We just thank you that we can rest in you of what you are doing through our lives. And that is impacting the lives of others. Thank you so much for allowing us this partnership to reach really into uh, the country of Spain through the Hayes family. And I pray God that you would continue to bless them. And I ask this in Jesus name. Amen. Well, thank you so much for allowing us to be a part of your ministry. It's exciting hearing um, what people are doing, uh, continuing to reach people. And so I just wanted to say thank you so much. Any closing remarks that you'd like to say to, uh, to, uh, to Liberty? Oh, we, we love Liberty. Anytime we can get back there and visit and, and, and just see the people, uh, even though we don't know a lot of people personally from Liberty anymore. It's been a long time. Yeah. Uh, I think it's been five years since we've been back. Um, but we're just very thankful for you guys. Thank you for your faithfulness. And uh, uh, we're just very excited to be able to partner with you and can't wait to one day get past your days to come on over. Um, <laughs> And, and visit us here in Spain and maybe some other people, but uh, we'd love to, to, to be able to get to show people yeah. this great country and show people um, the great work that God is doing, not yeah. just in the ministries here, but just in ministries all around yeah, uh, here true. in Spain and see what God is doing. So, yeah. Thank you so much for letting us interview you. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing, continue to see what God's going to do through your life and ministry. And we'll continue to pray for these requests also. Thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Take care. It's exciting to see how that God has used somebody that uh, many times we think about their past and they probably have always been a missionary. But it's neat to see how God is using people all across this world. God is using us, can he even use us here in Las Vegas. And remember that not only is a missionary someone that goes out from this place to another country, but we can be a missionary here in Las Vegas as we share the truth and love of Jesus Christ to others.